Okay, I'm going to loosen the belt. First, you loosen the tension on the idler pulley. The actual adjustment is here. In order to loosen it, we want the pulley to drop down. And there it is. Got a diagram on the core support for putting this back in place if we forget how to route it. Watch the fan blades when you're working around them. They can be sharp. They can cut your hand readily. This water pump's been on this engine for 140,000 miles. We'll go ahead and change the pump since we have access to it. If we needed to change the thermostat, which has been done recently, this is the thermostat housing and the thermostat is inside this housing. And there's the water pump. A few comments about the new water pump. Make sure that the direction of rotation of the impeller is the same between the new and the original water pump. So again, I use Teflon sealant on the bolts and make sure that I don't have sealant on the end of the bolts that will end up in the cooling system. I'm not even going to tighten it fully here. I'll bring it up to just below the torque threshold and cross. So now I'm tightening the two bolts on the bracket. Always start these by hand. These are aluminum threads and use your torque specs because you don't want to over tighten bolts in aluminum threads. One area of the Jeep Cherokee that could always stand improvement was the cooling system. From the introduction of the 4 liter inline 6 forward, cooling has been a challenge. For a variety of reasons, the factory cooling system, which was crowded by design, had a great deal of extra work to do. The mechanical, engine driven fan is small in diameter. The auxiliary electric fan is crowded into a small section of the radiator. The radiator is broad and not very tall, which has an impact on surface area. These challenges are created by the design of both the body and the chassis of the XJ Cherokee. One of the only ways that cooling can be dramatically improved, and this is a real concern, especially on engines that are built to the 4.5, 4.6, 4.7 stroker design, where you have more horsepower, is to increase the size of the radiator itself and to use materials in the radiator that are more efficient. The role of the Griffin radiator, like any other radiator, is to dissipate heat, to take the BTUs from the engine's horsepower and the heat generated and release that from the radiator. The efficiency of a radiator is determined by the airflow across the core and the actual surface area in the core. 